Today, I want to take you through my journey of becoming a 4KD player. What exactly did I do to go from a 0.7 when I started to a 4KD? I get asked this question all the time. Joe, how do I improve? So I want to start by taking this back to the very beginning and really talk to you about what I did and how I went about improving. Now we go back to the start of the pandemic. Remember that time we all went into lockdown. My friend had an extra Xbox. So he said, Joe, come play Warzone with us. Now I grew up playing Call of Duty. So I've always been okay at first person shooters, but I hadn't played in 10 plus years. So I started playing Verdansk. We, I was a 0.7 KD player. So I really, I was using a long range Modern Warfare AUG. That just shows you how kind of clueless I was with what I was actually doing and we were the team that did this uh the recon contracts going for the win I digress okay so now we go ahead and probably come June or July I was like I really want to start getting better at this game I want to start to drop higher kill games this was kind of around the time I discovered Twitch and I was watching a lot of the pro players drop 20 bombs 30 bombs and 40 bombs and I was like I want to do this so I started kind of at the basics the aim and movement doing modern warfare multiplayer bots and to be honest with you you should be doing that every single day before you drop in now i don't do it as much as i used to but in the beginning i did it every single day and there were times that i would actually jump on just to do modern warfare bots to be able to work on my aim and movement now understand that i'm doing this video today not to help you become a 4kd player understand that becoming a 4kd player is very very difficult but i just want you to improve as a player maybe drop more 20s have more fun with your friends become a 1.5 or 2kd player and maybe even get more wins so that's why i want to do this video today just to give you some insight into to how I went about doing it. Now, the first thing, as I said, is going to be aim and movement. Actually, real quick, if you are looking to get better rebirth, by the way, just hit that subscribe button down below. I've already said I've gone from 0.7 to a 4 KD, and I tell you that because I actually know what it takes to get better. I've done it myself. I started in your shoes and have now become uh, the player that I am today. But we start off with aim and movement, okay? So that's the most important thing, consistency in your aim and movement. That's what really separates even a 2 KD from a 4 KD player is that consistency. You know, when you are starting out, really focus on those things. Focus on your basic movements, slide canceling, strafing, jumping, and, you know, jumping, jump peeking corners, right? So we have jump peeking corners and jumping while shooting. And then focus on your aim, hitting high damage areas. Even more so, just being consistent with your horizontal. So at least you're always hitting that frame of the body, and you're at least always doing some amount of damage. The, the high damage areas will come with practice. Now, one of the biggest things that I want to talk to you about is when I first started out, I watched pro players all the time. It was the pandemic. I was working from home. I still work a full-time job to this day on top of producing, you know, rebirth videos every single day for you and some fortunes keep as well. But I was working full-time. So I was always and still continue to always watch streamers as I'm playing. And by the way, let me just address that I started out on Verdansk, right? I didn't jump over to rebirth until probably summer of 2021. So about a year and a little bit ago is when I switched over to Rebirth because I love the resurgence dynamic. I started streaming. I like the pace of it a lot better. I like the fact that we get to respawn back in. If you die, you don't have to sit around for five to 10 minutes like a normal BR. I, I just fell in love with Rebirth. But, you know, I started out on Verdansk. And going back to what I was saying is, I still study pro players. What is their movement? How do they get out of bad situations? How do they re-challenge? And I, that actually kind of brings me up to another point is one of the best game modes to get better, and a, this is very slept on. You might leave at this point in the video if you do, I, I, it is what it is. I used Plunder all the time. Now, here's why I used Plunder. Just hear me out for a second. Back when we had Verdansk, we had Storage Town. Now we have Airfield on Caldera, but it's not nearly as good. I would put myself in bad situations. So I'd go in and I'd warm up, and then I would just drop into Plunder probably for about 30 to 30 minutes to an hour, and I would just focus on putting myself in tough situations. I would never replate, so I'd always be fighting low plates. I'd be forced to use audio. I'd be forced to hit high damage areas. I'd be forced to learn how to re-challenge and handle situations that I I'm going to handle on Verdansk and Rebirth. Again, this is something if you have a little bit more time and are really trying to take this to the next level, but understand that the more you put yourself in those situations, the better off you're going to be. Mistakes are going to happen, and as long as we learn from those mistakes, I, I talked about this a little bit on stream today, but people always ask, Joe, I get three and four stacked. Well, my question to you is, why do you get three and four stacked? Oh, well, they're pushing me. Okay, well, if they're pushing you, it's because you don't have information up, which means you are letting them push you because you, you don't know that they're actually coming. Okay, well, Joe, I get four stacked. Why do you get four stacked? Why well, get four stacked? Because it's four people in a room. Okay, well, you don't have information that they're, they're actually in that room. So you're getting caught not knowing where they are, and that's why you get stacked. Joe, I get four stacked by, you know, people who I get third partied. Okay. 
Okay, well, you get third party because you don't see that they're actually coming. So all of these different situations where you die, don't get me wrong, there's going to be situations, whether it's a guy, you know, shooting a rocket or, you know, four people ghosted in a room, there's going to be a situation where you actually, you, it is what it is. It's a tough spot or maybe you miss shots. As long as you learn from those, you're going to start becoming a better player. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about is solo duos. We'll see what Warzone 2 brings. Right now, we are obviously don't have this option on Rebirth, but when it comes to solo duos, I absolutely love this game mode. I love solo duos, and here's why. This is one of the biggest things that I did to improve as a player when it comes to fighting outnumbered. Everything I do, I view as a solo duo situation. So if I'm in a 1v3, right? Again, I'm a better player, so I, anybody, for the most part, besides like a super, super, super sweaty squad, I'm going to farm that team, let them respawn back in, so that I can ultimately get more kills. Now, when it comes to a solo duo situation, the way I look at a, a trio's gameplay is I'm going to get a clean kill on the first guy. I can then immediately challenge the second guy and leave the third guy alive, and I'll farm that guy. So right there's your solo duo situation. Let's change the script, right? And when I talk about playing solo duos, it's all about practicing with these situations. So now let's take a solo duo situation. Let's take a solo duo situation where you get shot at first, right? You're playing solo duos, you get shot at first, you have to reposition, find a different angle, and then re-engage that fight. Okay, let's take trios. I get a clean kill. Both of those enemies are now stacking. Right, so both of those enemies, the two other enemies are pushing me together. Well, there's your solo duo situation that I just explained, where you now have to, they know exactly where you are. So you have to reposition, re-engage, and then figure out how to get another clean kill. Solo quads is definitely a little bit tougher or in, in kind of 1v4 situations. But I say solo trio, solo quads, I'm talking about 1v3 and 1v4. You shouldn't play those. I don't think there's a ton of benefits to playing solo trios and solo quads if you're not a content creator. It definitely does well as a content creator to post those. But if you're, it's not just play with teammates and split. That's the same exact situation you're looking to put yourself in. You just have the respawn dynamic. And a lot of times what's going to happen in solos trios, if you actually queue in, no fills. So just one one person in a trios or one person in a quads game is you're going to die off spawn and you're just going to keep going back in. And, and it's just going to get frustrating. You're going to lose confidence in yourself. So solo duos, you know, in terms of quads is once again, you get a clean kill. You challenge that second enemy. Okay, now the last two know where I am. So... That's the same exact situation I explained before, where you get shot at first, you got to reposition, re-engage, and then figure out how you're going to go challenge that, those guys. So I always talk about solo duos. I talk about it a lot. I still play it to this day. I love doing loadouts, which I post on my second channel in solo duos because you start to learn how I go about handling those situations. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is confidence. People talk about confidence all the time. Where does my confidence come from as a 4KD player? It's very simple, and it's a very simple equation. Confidence equals information plus execution it should be execution plus information to be honest with you but it does it just doesn't flow as much and what i mean by that is my ability my confidence comes from the fact that i trust my aim and movement and the anticipation that's another big one that we'll talk about here in a second but i trust my aim and movement the ability to hit high damage areas consistency consistently the ability to use movement to take less damage and win that gunfight especially win that gunfight cleanly so that's the execution component now then we add in the information component which is uavs minimap pings anticipating if you hear an audio cue what any of those six ways that we go about finding people which okay i'll run through the six ways you've got shoot uh minimap pings when you hear people shooting so you hear somebody shooting an unsilenced weapon you check the minimap you have audio cues like footsteps and people shooting you've got big game bounties you've got uavs you got mini minimap pings after a kill and then there's oh the respawn dynamic or the resurgence dynamic of getting you know a kill after and getting the pings after you kill a teammate so six ways to get information so if i tell you where somebody is can you execute on it that's your confidence right there so for me if you tell me that there is a guy above me i have confidence in myself to anticipate hit shots use my movement to take less damage that's where my confidence comes from where my confidence comes from in 1v2 situations is the same thing the ability to execute on that and having that experience so if you notice kind of the biggest thing that we're talking about here is your ability to use aim and movement and then you're just going to have to handle situations i'll go use another analogy that you've probably heard before if you're subscribed already which is the bell curve of improving when you are first starting starting out and wait, yeah let's do this when you're first starting out aim and movement is the most important thing the most important thing to improve upon because even if i give you information you're not going to be able to execute on it if you don't have good 
good aim and movement some consistency in your aim and movement i'm not saying you got to have aim and movement like a pro player i'm talking about basic movement along with use you know just hitting shots right consistently hitting the body not even high damage areas just hitting the body in general not having that wiggle aim that you know you know exactly what i'm talking about where you're all over the place so in the beginning you got to focus on that then you go and you start learning about gameplay strategy you start learning about positioning you start learning about how to really use your mini map to your advantage you start learning about decision making is it better to push this team over here or this team over here and you really start to figure those things out and then we once you start to learn those you learn those by making mistakes you learn those by watching my videos you learn those by you know watching other streamers and studying guys if you have that sort of time and are able to and when i talk about those players i'm talking about players like knight reed boy you know are kind of the main two that i watch i watch cheap for fortunes keep over on twitch but Point being is, once you get to that point where you're starting to understand positioning, gameplay strategy, pace of play, when to challenge immediately, when not to challenge immediately, then we go back to aim and movement. Then we start talking about the ability to consistently use basic movement to your advantage to take less damage. We talk about using advanced combination movements that slide cancel to a jump that i always talk about that you guys see where i slide one way and then i jump back the other that's all it is a lot of times advanced movement is is basic movements put in a combination so then that bell curve we start out at aim we go to the, all the positioning game strategy anticipation then we go back to aim and movement where now you really focus on hitting those high damage areas consistently consistently mixing in headshots consistently mixing in upper torso shots and really starting to focus on using your movement to take less damage and that's going to allow you to start to 1v3 and 1v4 now i tell you all of this simply to help you improve that was my journey to become a better player really focusing on aim and movement then we start focusing on getting more UAVs up, gameplay strategy, making mistakes, pushing the wrong teams, learning from those situations. And then it's every single day just continuing to work on your aim and movement before you drop in, getting a good warm up in. It takes 10 minutes. My warm up is down in the comments below, actually, or down in the description below for you. This way you can actually warm up before you drop in. As I always say, you know, dropping in that first game generally for a lot of you is a blender game, right? You drop in, you're like, oh, I just feel so rusty. My aim feels all over the place. I'm dead sliding. My movement feels trash. Okay, let's get that out of the way early. I'll throw in this right here. If you don't have Modern Warfare multiplayer, you can go ahead and do it on Plunder. We obviously have Modern Warfare 2 coming out in the fall, followed by Warzone 2. So we're going to be doing videos on that as well. But overall, I hope that gives you a little bit of insight into how I went about becoming a 4KD player. Start to implement that into your gameplay. Start to implement. And you don't have to do it all. Like I said, guys, little humble brag for myself. You know, I am, according to Kaj, tracker a top 25,000 player in the world top 0.7 percent my goal is not to if your goal is to become a 4kd player you have extremely lofty expectations it is very difficult to do and and yeah i think there are times that i don't give myself enough credit because i still don't put myself up there with some of the best players and i i really still don't think that i am up there at that point but what i want you to do is start to be able to drop a 20 bomb you know i think anybody can drop a 20 bomb with a little bit of practice and game plan gameplay strategy you know start to drop more 20 bombs i want you to go from being the guy that's the bottom of the leaderboard on your team to being the top of the leaderboard to carrying your team i want you to start to have more fun feel like you can survive in these sweaty lobbies you know you're not going to drop absolute bangers in those but at the end of the day we can start to instead of going you know two and eight we go eight and two you know, we start to flip that script around and we start to become a better player where we can compete with those top guys. And we're going to understand that those sweaty lobbies are very difficult, but I just want you to improve as a player. That's always been my whole goal ever since I started content creation back in October of 2020. I just want to help people improve at the game because I went through it. I know what it takes and I'm just going to keep every single day giving you that information, giving you breakdowns, giving you tips, giving you tactics that you can use to slowly become the player that you want to be. Want to be. I'm going to finish this up right here. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much. I, I cannot thank you enough for that. Focus on your weekly KD, not your overall KD. As you play more, it's going to be very tough for you to move that overall KD, but the weekly KD is a good barometer as to how you are playing. Are you improving? Are you having a bad week? Why are you doing those things? The question is always why. Why am I not improving? And from there, you can really start to focus on what you need to work on. If you're missing shots, work on aim. If you're not moving well, work on movement. If you're challenging and being too 
too over aggressive and putting yourself in 1v3 and 1v4 situations that you can't handle stop doing that slow down a little bit get an initial knock and then go about repositioning based on the information that you have so we can really start to focus on how do we go about improving i'm gonna cut it right there guys i hope you found today's video helpful as i always say let's get better today and i will see you tomorrow